that. Good. So I had this piece bolted together like this. Okay, you got your quick disconnect, and I've just got one bolt in it right now because I'm about to pull it out. But you got your quick disconnect, and it was bolted onto your hub adapter. So it goes from three bolts, and then this is actually a universal one with five to six bolts. So all I'm doing right now is I'm just gonna take this thing apart, and then we're actually gonna step this down with a step down bit um, to this size. Now this is the size of the inner diameter, not the outer. I really wish it was the size of the outer, but at least being this fits the inner perfect. If I step this down to the inner, I'll be able to line my walls up so that I can make sure this pipe is center of this. And this is actually interesting how my hole is more over this way. You know, it's more over. You can see us more over. So either that hole in the center that I started in wasn't perfectly machined in the center, or my step down bit walked this way. I don't know how the step down bit would have walked this way, but hey, it could, you know, maybe somebody can explain why it's like that or what your theory is on it. But either way, we'll, uh, we'll make sure we shift the pipe a little more this way and not have it, you know, too much on that side. But that takes a little bit of weight out and it also just helps you line up the center a little better, even though now it looks like you still can't go off of that, that, you know, we're still gonna have to uh, measure the outside diameter and line all that up. So all I've done now is come in here and just take your tape measure and measure around the sides to figure out what it's supposed to be. And what I come up with is actually seven eighths all the way around the side. So from the edge of this to the outside, it's seven eighths. So that's gonna be perfectly center. I'm gonna trace this with a Sharpie so we have somewhere else to line it back up to whenever we do that, being drilling inside didn't work. And as you can see, you can see down there in the bottom of how uh, off it is. There you go. So you can see down there in the bottom how off it is. So I don't understand, maybe you can comment, let me know if you think the drill walked or if you think it was just machined poorly. It is a cheap eBay part, but somebody still had to machine it. I'm not ready yet, by the way. I know, you're never ready. No, I'm not, I'm never ready. <laughs> so Mike's gonna just weld this up for us real fast. Uh, like yeah, I said, we've got uh, seven eighths all around the perimeter and then we've cleaned that up and then he's just gonna see, break it, why don't you? And then he's just gonna put, put that on there. And then that's what it's basically gonna look like when it's done. So he's gonna do the video on welding, not me. It's not my department. Uh, Mike did a video on welding this on his channel. If you are looking to make one and you uh, want to get some pointers maybe on welding it up, you can go check it out. I'm gonna weigh it when we get to the house. I'm gonna put it on the scales compared to the other one that I had bought off of eBay, which was just a cheaper one and show y'all the weight difference and go over why we decided to build this versus using the one that I had bought. So let's see what we got, because this thing is heavy, man. I mean, it's just, it's crazy. So one pound, 15 ounces, eight tenths of an ounce. So basically one pound, 15 ounces. And then this is going to be pretty much one pound even. Uh, the four is the tenth. So one pound versus one pound, 15 ounces. So shaving 15 ounces off by uh, switching this up and i'm telling you this thing if you could be here um it just feels way heavier i mean it's i mean it's just nuts how heavy this feels the scale really doesn't do it justice it just doesn't um really show the difference man because i'm telling you if y'all were here this thing is you would be like you want to believe the scale i promise i mean this thing is solid look how thick that is and it's solid all the way down whereas this all we got is this little piece and then a pipe, you know, and then this chunk down here. But I was gonna powder coat this, but it's actually, uh, I've uh, been really busy. So I'm at the house, uh, took it home to test it on. I'm gonna test it, fit it. Then I might just finish grinding this paint off and see how hard it is just to put a polish on this thing instead of a powder coat. Um, but who knows, we'll see. I'm gonna at least grind this off and see how hard it is to put a polish on, but I am gonna test fit it real fast. All right, so here's what we got. We got a mess, okay? So I decided, I said, well, before I decided to powder coat it, I was like, let's just see if we could polish it out decent. I'm not a polisher, actually. I know nothing about aluminum polish. But you can see I got some of this old stuff, really old uh, Mother's Mag and aluminum polish. All I did was took the wire wheel, knocked the paint off the end, scratched it all up. 
of course, um, and then took a sanding block like you do sheetrock with, one I had just laying around, because I knew the basics behind polishing is you gotta sand it, uh, and then you polish it. And then I took it and just rubbed some of that on there. So that don't look bad. Um, you know, if I take my time and sand this better, basically I know if you, uh, when I did my motor plates on the car, I can't see them right now, but I actually stepped them all the way down with wet sandpaper at the shop and polished them out where they're mirror uh, finish. So I know I could do it, but this thing's gonna get handled a lot and beat up. So I'm not really worried about it, but you know, that looks good from sitting in the car. That shouldn't be a bad looking piece. I think I'm gonna just leave it raw and not worry about even powder coating the thing, you know? So I think I'm gonna bolt this to the steering wheel and put it in the car and see how it looks. If it bothers me and I want it black later, then I'll go back and powder coat it. And as always, we have Harper out here complaining about something. So today's gonna be a long day. It is uh, just notified me that it's supposed to start freezing rain here in a minute. It's not doing nothing at the moment. But yeah, we're gonna stay inside, work on the car and stay warm. So here's what we ended up with. Bolted the steering wheel on and got the extension on and zip tied uh, our cords also to the column. So my cords are zip tied to the steering wheel and then they're also zip tied to the column. So I don't want pull on these buttons. Like I said, I've seen so many people complain about these buttons, you know, coming loose. And I just don't understand why they don't put a little bit of time into making their item better. So we're gonna go put this in the car and see what it feels like. Get in there and see if that reach is a lot better. I got Harper's car in the garage this time. She's got actually Maserati. Harper, hey, is this a no prep car? She don't wanna talk about it. Definitely probably a no time car. What'd you think, Harper? It's a no time car and you just don't wanna talk about it? Let's clip this in and get in the car and see what it feels like. So that's what you have, which is excellent clearance against the steering wheel now. It's on there and it's, it's spinning so easy because we actually have all of the steering unhooked. And we are lounging in sweatpants today. Oh, and loafers. So there's what you got. So that's perfect. Like that's uh. It's a nice reach. My arms are, you know, fully uh, extended. Not bad. And she's mad because she wants to get in the car. This is what I deal with, trying to work on the car. But, yeah. So I wasn't going to go over this. Um, actually, I just jumped right into it. But uh, I figured I would share this little quick tip with y'all um, to save some money. So... Originally for my switchboard up top, I had went with this quick car one. Um, the brackets for this thing are just a little ridiculous. Like always, I wanna find a cheaper way. So I had went with these eBay ones, which were the cheapest you can get. These are actually absolutely junk, don't buy these. Um, they just don't fit good in here. So the new ones that I tried out that were pretty cheap too, I will post a picture of what I paid for them. are these okay of course they're made in china because i use a lot of cheap stuff i don't i don't like expensive stuff um and when you get them they come like this so they come with all these different size rubbers for spacings and then you get two bar clamps like that okay they just got a hole through them uh, rubber lining to clamp the bar and you get different size bushings uh, based on what size it says they fit on the listing so this one fits about an inch and a five eighths to a two inch bar so i went through here picked out my appropriate inch and five eighths which is going to be the 1.625 um, and then i took and drilled out the uh, ends where the circle's at i drilled them out to a 7 16th okay the 7 16th allows me to put a an M8 nut cert in here. I didn't want to go with standard. I do like to go with metric stuff because a lot of bolts that I have laying around from the collision industry, um, you know, and automotive bolts nowadays are actually metric, not standard. So I know a lot of race cars are built on standard, but I try to keep all my stuff metric because um, that's what my business is set up around. So I step these down if you take your M8 and if you use one of these charts right here, 
I actually had these left for my granddad. They have the different sizes of the holes so that you can test fit them in there. So the M8 uh, fits down into the 7 16th hole the best. It fits better into the 27 64th hole, but I don't have that. So I went with a 7 16th. And when you use your uh, nut certs anyway, they go in and then they mushroom out. So you can kind of fill them in. But anyway, I drilled them holes out on this side. And now what we're left with is we can take one of these bolts which is an Allen head that I had over there in my scrap pal. Okay. And now this bolt will thread. And I tested this first, you know, to find a bolt I had. This bolt will thread right into there, to the face. Okay. So then what I've done is I've took some aluminum scrap. Some of this, just some old aluminum scrap I got. And I built some tabs. Okay. So I did these spacings on the end down here. That's an old hole. That's for nothing for this project. It's like, that's an old hole. I use scrap for a lot of stuff. Um, and I cut these, try to get you on focus here, so that you could put a rivet through there, okay? Like that. So this will go on the back side, rivet to that. And then these right here, these holes over here, will be able to bolt in that side and you'll be able to adjust them and move this up and down depending on how tight I want my switch panel to the um, headliner, okay? Or if I want it spaced down. So I went ahead and did that, and then that, you know, instead of figuring out in the car, I just like to make everything universal as much as possible. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this, rivet this to here, and then probably bolt it up in the center and then put it in the car and see how it tests. I've already tested these in the car. They test really, they fit really tight, so it's pretty nice. And you do put the rubber bushing in before you install it. It goes in like that. So I'm going to get these um, end plates riveted onto here. And then get that bolted onto here and then put it in the car. And then I just want to kind of show you all real fast how that is. Because these, I ordered quite a few of these. Because I'm also going to make the brace for the front valence that we talked about in another video. It's going to clamp onto that tube and then some piece, or not front valence, the uh, front bumper. It's going to clamp around that tube and then it's going to go up to support the center of the front bumper. So I'm all for cheap uh, stuff to save money and I'm all for sharing it so that you don't have to buy uh, the expensive high-end um, stuff, you know, because that's how you rack up a lot of money in a car fast. So you can make your car look really good and professional if you just dig a little bit and think outside of the box. Basically, these are light bar clamps is what these are for, for like uh, ATVs and stuff like that to go around roll bars and do that i mean you could use these clamps to make all kinds of stuff man bottle brackets nitrous bottle holders uh, your co2 bottle maybe a helmet hook you know you could buy this and then build a flat plate that comes off and curves even though the helmet hooks are pretty cheap but i mean you could you could just make so much stuff because you have this one mounting hole and if you needed to tap you know two holes here so you have some thread ends i mean you could even drill and tap them but it's a real good thick uh lightweight solid piece it's aluminum so it doesn't weigh much at all uh, it'd be easy to drill and tap but this would definitely give you a professional option without having to pay uh for these stupid brackets that are made for all these products you know when these company makes these products uh the bracket is half the freaking cost of the product half the time and i just refuse to pay that you know i know there's better ways um, to do this and not have to waste all that money so i'm gonna get this put together and then i'll show you all what we got all right so we got the bar clamps mounted up there to the top of the roll bar and what I like about this setup is then I have my panel right here with my wiring. So I have enough wiring where if I needed to lay it up here to work on it or do something to it, I could and it's easy to get to. Um, and I know this is not the best panel, but this is just a budget panel for now. And then to put it back in, you literally just come right here, tuck your wiring like that, tuck it back there. You know, and then you'll just bolt it back in. You'll put bolts back through it, zip tie your wires back to the roll bar. And that's it. So you don't have to sit there and fight with the stupid uh, roll bar clamps or nothing. You just got two bolts through the face. It's nice and easy to take it in and out if you have to do anything to it. Or if you have an issue and you need to, um, you know, service it between rounds or something. So I'm going to get that screwed back in, get these wires zip tied uh, back up.
right, so here's what you got with it all put back up. Got my wires just zip tied up. And originally, you know, I had my wires tucked on the outside of the roll bar this way so you didn't see it from the inside of the car. But then, like I said, then I realized just now that um, servicing that's actually a pain because then they're behind the bar. So I'd rather them come, you know, go on the behind the bar right here because they go over here to a uh, fuse block or a, uh, a block that I tie everything together with and then come up here and wrap over the inside and just lay over top. That way, if this thing needs to come out reserviced, two bolts, cut some zip ties, flip it in, and then you can easily, uh, easily work on it. So hopefully that will help somebody out with um, trying to build them a mount or mount something up on their cage. All right, let me show you all an example of a couple more things where I use them clamps for and you know what I like about them. So if you remember, you know, if you go back to the front bumper video, the video where we did the, uh, I don't think it was the valence. I think it was the one before the valence where I mounted the front bumper. Okay, let me show you how my front bumper is mounted. So under here, the front bumper just has a simple tab that it bolts into, okay? It's a fiberglass bumper. It bolts in off the front. The problem I was having is with the center. So I did have a tab up there, okay? Right there off of the fiberglass, but I needed to connect it to here, this tube down here for support. So as you can see now, this thing is rock solid. And what I've done is I've also used one of these to clamp around here, and then I just bent me up some flat stock and it's actually tapped and drilled up here in that piece. You know, so it bolts right in with the Allen head bolt and then it bolts right in there with the Allen head bolt. So that makes it nice and simple when it's time to take the front bumper off. You can literally just undo this right here, one bolt. You don't gotta mess with this clamp. You can leave this clamp on and you don't gotta mess with it up there. So you can just undo that, undo the bolt down there, undo the bolt down here, and then your whole front bumper will come off just in a matter of, you know, uh, two minutes or a minute. and then this will piece will be out of the way. Uh, if I knew how to weld, I would have probably used uh, a piece of round uh, stick, aluminum stick, you know, and welded an eyelet on the end, an eyelet on that end, but I'm not a welder. So all I did was use some flat stock bent up. You'll never see it, it'll be behind the valence. Um, the other thing that I used the clamp on is I have put one right here around this bar and it's gonna go up here to this uh, um, pipe on this side, which is gonna have the wastegate right in this area. So it's gonna help support it. We're just gonna use another piece of flat stock and you know, cut the flat stock out so it fits the radius of the pipe. That will kind of make it more rigid so that it doesn't, you know, the weight of the blow off valve up there uh, doesn't, you know, put a put too much stress on the pipes. So there's just a couple things that I used them clamps for. And um, you know, if I could go back in the next car I built, I would not even have done this, you know, made tabs. Uh, I was watching a race car company the other day and they said they don't like uh, mounts like that, that clamp on because it makes it look like an afterthought and I have to 100% disagree. And if I redid it, if my next car, I wouldn't put any tabs on if I could avoid it. That way you could change stuff up continuously with clamps um, as you learn or grew or change combinations and you won't have to keep welding and repainting um, you know, tabs. So I'm a big fan for the bolt on clamps because it makes it so you can move stuff around and change stuff up at a later date. But I figured I would just share them, them two pieces with y'all, uh, also of, you know, some ideas that you can use the clamps for. So there's a, uh, you know, a couple ideas. So there's a small mini update on the car, uh, a couple things that I've done. Um, you know, I don't really have a ton going on right now. I need to get to the wiring, but I'm just really dreading it. And I think I actually, uh, really really want to try to find somebody just pay somebody to wire this car because i really don't want to do it at all um but i'm gonna keep moving down the checklist uh over this weekend and trying to check off little stuff like that you know now the bumper is solid mounted uh, i do need i want to change the zeus's out in the valence to the island head ones i've got some of them and then i need to get the zeus's done in the front but i actually have to order springs for them but i need to get zeus's in so i can measure my thickness and then i actually need to change the springs out on the side because they're a little too tight but we're just gonna keep running down this checklist if i see anything else that is uh helpful to y'all i will continue to point it out